and this is the agreement you signed, you signed up for. So such a customer is allowed to complain and say, because of this merger, there has actually been changes in my, in my terms, which I didn't sign up for, and no one informed me about these, these changes. So it, there's a protection both ways in terms of one, overall, if at all the company tries to change anything, they had said that this is what we'll do. And we have, been, we have investigated companies and actually forced them like, these are the prices you said that will be maintained. So we expect to see those prices. And those customers that you have taken higher prices from them, is that higher, higher charges on them, is that you have to refund such times. And this also came in in terms of, it doesn't go just to mergers, it goes to the whole of competition law. Like in terms of uh, when COVID just came in, one of the things that parties were trying, that some companies were trying to do is to hike prices. And we penalized some supermarkets for such conduct. We told them actually you have to refund the The, to the consumers. If I go to telecommunication sector and how, whether we boost competition to a specific sector, because I believe this was going towards telecommunication. Yes, we have had interventions. For instance, initially, most of us, when you looked at the mobile money uh, agents, they were tied down to one provider. And one of the most initial in uh, interventions was that we made these companies that you cannot sign that non-binding agreement whereby you, that uh, agent is allowed to provide a different mobile money provider. And today when you go to any agent, you'll find they have over five personal people, they are, the type of companies they are dealing with in terms of mobile money and all that kind of banking. That was one, one of our interventions. The other one is what Mr. Kamiti had alluded to earlier, that when I'm doing a transaction, am I being able to see the prices for, for this? What is the charge that I'm being charged? And you find our interventions do not only come in as a company being a monopoly or a company being dominant. Dominant per se as per competition is not a crime. Abuse of it is what becomes a crime. A company can grow and become dominant on its own volition. It's doing research, it's doing innovation, all those in any sector. So you cannot go and punish the company because of its dominance. Punishment comes in because you are abusing the dominance. I'm forcing prices on that I require from my customers. I'm not really, uh, supplying you with the, with the goods that you require. So we have had interventions, and also a key critical component in the telecommunication sector is collaboration with the communication authority, and also the research we are doing into the sector towards digital banking, towards the new elements of it. Because competition is not only happening at the level of, I have this number of subscribers, I'm making this revenue. But how much are they also competing compete in terms of the digital banking, digital economy? So we are conducting research currently in such areas with collaboration with other partners, even together with the likes of the regulators in the banking sector, such that we are able to come up with clear policies that can guide and help star comp spa competition in, the, in those sectors. Thanks. Uh, th thank you very much for those interesting questions. I think I would like to respond to the question on monopoly, which we call it state aid. Before I do that, I would like to respond to the fact that uh, in terms of uh, mergers approved with the conditions, we also do have uh, compliance check. Every year we follow up on the cases that we have approved and see if they have complied with the conditions. So we do have compliance check. And also another thing which is related is the fact that uh, in the event that we have a decision on any of the cases, we also assess impact on the market. What has been the outcome two, three years down the line with regard to the impact of that decision of the authority on the market. So we do have impact assessment and also compliance check that also comes. Now, going to the state aid or monopoly, uh, state agencies are formed for specific reasons. And they also have specific uh, regulators. That's what I was referring to as uh, specific sector regulators. So the first uh, point of complaint should go to those uh, sector regulators. However, in the event that there are issues around uh, policies and regulations that might need to be addressed, we do give our position to relevant agencies. May it be sector regulators or the ministry in charge of the policy. So if a, a state uh, monopoly uh, agency falls under the Ministry of Energy, for example, then our advice to the policy maker, which is the ministry, as opposed to the monopoly uh, agency, so to speak. So that's how what we do. And uh, we cannot overstep the mandate of other agencies, but we do give advice to the policy concerns and also uh, to the specific sector regulators. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, that's well uh, responded. Uh, let's get some further questions if there are from the online participants. 
kindly share the mic. And then after that, I think we'll just take three more from the floor as we end up so that we can save on time. Good. Uh, from Zoom, I have Frida who is asking this question. How and where can the consumers uh, air their rights? How and where? We also have another one from Wycliffe who is asking uh, where can one report these dig uh, digital led lenders uh, who keep on uh, calling you and threatening us on issues to do with the uh, Rivering, I'm a, being rivered, I'm a, uh, being a, a rivery to somebody who you did not give consent. Uh, the third one, probably from myself, is to ask: When you you said that marriages, sorry, uh, mergers are marriages, when you give th uh, this certificate of marriage, do you give provision for divorce? And how often does it occur? Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, those are very quick uh, direct questions. Eh? Yeah, perhaps you can also uh, com uh, supplement with the, with the role that uh, CIK plays in conjunction with other, uh, other authorities also that are in charge of the issues of the consumer rights and also uh, safety of products. For example, ACA, ACA uh, where do we cut the line between the roles that the state agencies play so that we don't have a duplication of roles? Those are three, and then after that we can have the last three from the members of the floor. Thank you so much for those questions. The first question is uh, where a consumer can air their rights or complaints. I took that as uh, their complaints on particular issues. Then you can directly lodge your complaint with the authority one would encourage you to go through our website, through our website www.cak.go.ke. You'd be able to get more information on how to lodge your complaint through our portal. But you can also send an email to the authority at complain at cak.go.ke or info at cak.go.ke. I know another question you're asking yourself is how long it will take to respond to you. <laughs> so we have a service charter and we adhere strictly to our service charter. Once you lodge a complaint with the authority, we will respond to you, acknowledge receipt of your complaint within three days. One important thing I would want to indicate is that as you lodge your complaint, it is important to uh, put in certain evidentiary uh, material. For example, we've seen many consumers going out to purchase a product and they do not have a receipt. And you know we'll have to investigate, we'll need a receipt or we'll need other evidences in order to investigate a particular matter. So it is important to attach those particular documents. And once we acknowledge receipt of the complaint, then we take another seven days to review just to see if it falls within our mandate, within our law. We also advise you on, uh, on, on, on certain documentation which may be missing and we would request for that uh, information. We write, then we, now we write a notice of investigation to the parties. We have realized that when we write a notice of investigation to the parties, they quickly go ahead to resolve the matter with you. And uh, we encourage quick resolution of complaints. But also, one of the important things you need to indicate to us is whether you had lodged that complaint with that particular party first. You know, if you had not complained and maybe they were willing to resolve it, then we need to give them a chance to resolve it. But if you complain to them and they were not willing to resolve, then the authority comes in to take up uh, the, the particular matter. Then how to report on mobile loan apps. We see cases regarding mobile loan apps and they come in two ways. One, if there were certain fees that were not disclosed, and there's a, there's a second element of harassment. The harassment now uh, comes in, may not fall within the Competition Act, within the consumer welfare provisions. 
but this is a matter that falls within the Data Protection Act with, and can, can be investigated by the Office of the Data Commission. Uh, my colleague Raphael also mentioned about the Data Protection Act, so, but you can still complain to the authority and we can adequately um, advise you or refer that particular complaint to the Office of the Data Commissioner and uh, that is also entrenched under our Section 68 of the Act where we can refer complaints to specialized service agencies. But our role with other agencies is uh, entrenched under our Section 67 and 68. For example, under Section 67, we have a mandate to consult the Kenya Bureau of Standards. And we also work with the Anti-Counterfeit Authority because we have seen or received complaints that touch on counterfeit products. And we, have, we do work with the such agencies to resolve consumer uh, issues. Because we have a mandate to investigate uh, matters on a sector-wide basis, what we do, we can proceed with investigating a matter and uh, in our final decision or determination, then we copy that particular government agency. So you'd find the authority under taking a determination or investigating a matter to the end and also informing a particular government agency that this is the decision that the authority was able to undertake. But we consult those agencies uh, in, in, our, in our investigations. We do that in various ways. Uh, in terms of collaborations, we may come up with uh, cooperation agreements through MOUs. We have one with the Communications Authority, with the Kenya Bureau of Standards and other government agencies such as the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority to investigate matters in the aviation sector on both competition and consumer protection or direct collaboration with them, such as even in the insurance industry and other agencies such as uh, on public uh, procurement. So that's how we work with other agencies. Thank you. Thank you. Just before I respond to the question on mergers, something I'd like to add from committee's uh, response is that all consumer complaints are handled free of charge. There is no charge to it. Any consumer complaint you bring to us, it's free of charge. So any member of the public would feel free to actually seek the service from the Competition Authority of Kenya. In terms of uh, after the marriage doesn't work. Basically, mainly what we have seen is that companies normally abandon the merger before they have come together. That, because it's only, not only the competition authority that gives approvals for transaction, so there will be other agencies that also they are looking for an approval. You can imagine a transaction in the banking sector and also the companies are publicly listed. They require an approval from CMA, they require an approval from CBK, they require an approval from CAK, among other agencies. So parties normally, what you have seen, and it's a global phenomenon that parties are burdened the merger before they have fully completed it. Or even when they say they are burdening it, they don't, they have not reached the level of actually fully coming together and then they are burdened the merger. Because it's also very extremely expensive to demerge two companies. And what we is normally provided for is that under the rules that the parties have to write to us officially and uh, do a merger withdrawal form to actually inform the authority that this merger did not take place. Because from the authority's perspective is that once two companies have been given an approval, from that day, they are considered as one entity. Whether they come together or not, to us is that they are one entity, so they are actually doing business together. So if tomorrow they were to bring anything else, they will be considered as one business entity. If there's any practice that will be considered that they are conducting, the relevant elements of it will be that the two companies are one. So once they have a burden, they would actually write to us through a merger withdrawal form and say that we have abandoned this transaction so that the authority is aware that they are no longer together and authority will respond and make sure that it's properly documented. And also if there are gazette notices, there are processes that are followed through the AG's office to ensure that the same information is, is actually goes out there to the public to know that they are not together. Thanks. Thank you. I think uh, we have responded to all the questions. Then two more from the floor and then we end there. Professor Bowen. Thank you. Um, I'd like to appreciate uh, CAK, Competition Authority of Kenya, for the presentations. Um, would also like to would also like to appreciate the students uh, that are here. 
Um, and just for the students, uh, and would also like to appreciate CAK, two of your colleagues, one is an intern at the CAK, we would like to appreciate that. And then there's also another one that is consulting for CAK uh, from here. So we'd like to appreciate CAK for that. Um, two related questions about reporting an investigation uh, uh, with, um, with respect to digital, uh, and, and I think we saw very clearly that um, there's a lot that's happening in the digital world, whether it's competition or consumer protection, uh, whether it's mergers and acquisitions. Um, so the first one, I, I did check your, uh, um, your website, and I did not see a portal. In fact, it's talking of a form, and I was wondering, maybe, maybe, maybe I got to the wrong website, uh, because given if, if you don't have a digital system, I think you can easily be overwhelmed by what you get. Uh, so maybe it is there, maybe I went to another website. But then also asking about now um, the investigation. Do you have an engine, a search engine? You're talking about big data here. Uh, so that you're able to mine and be able to see, and I think in line with what um, uh, Dr. Morris was saying, you are able to see what's happening in the digital world, you know, by mining the data, and you're able to see trends and developments. So I don't know whether you have such initiatives, because that would be very helpful um, as, as far as uh, your investigations are concerned. Otherwise, thank you very much. Welcome uh, again uh, to this. Thank you. Oh, okay, the last, the very last one, Dorothy. Thank you. Thank you. There was a question from YouTube just before the blackout, and the question was, to the panelist, kindly comment on the debate to split Safaricom and Mpensa since it has become the dominant player in the telecommunication sector in Kenya. I think this one is to Mr. Mburu. Do you, post, do, you do post audits after you determine a market definition after a particular business that has already been evaluated? And last one from me. From the CCBA case, can a merger finally end up becoming a monopoly? Thank you. Okay. I think in any order, we can have those last responses from Professor Bowen and then uh, Dr. Kagwaini, and then we end there. Uh, my name is Mogambi Motegi. I think uh, I was not part of the panelists today, but I'm part of the team. So I'll start with the first question. There's one on uh, the website. So if you go to our website, under a tab called e-services, you'll find all, uh, all the e-services that we offer. So if it's buyer power complaints, you'll find a link to the portal that will take you out of the website. And, and, and there, there you can load your consumer complaint. You can load your merger application. Over and above that, we have developed uh, tutorials in both, uh, what, what do you call it, visual and uh, uh, hard, hard copy. So we've uploaded them there. On our YouTube page, you'll find each, there are videos that we are, we are releasing showing how you can actually uh, do, uh, finish the process of filing a, a complaint or anything uh, online. Uh, regarding the matter of uh, the telecommunications uh, industry. We will not mention uh, names, but we know uh, who it is. Uh, what we have seen over time, and data from CEA, from uh, our CISA Regulator uh, Communications Authority of Kenya, shows that the leading telecommunications firm in the country has been gaining market share over the last 10 or so years. Eh? That is a fact which we have even presented uh, before uh, a committee uh, in, in Senate. However, where, where cases where get, just being dominant, the fact that the player is dominant is not an illegality under our law. Just a player can get to that uh, level of, uh, of, of dominance by being maybe fast to market, they could be more innovative, they could read the, the consumer better, so you don't necessarily have to punish them because of business ingenuity or whatever the case. This does not just apply to this example that we, uh, we have been, uh, the question that has been asked or the entities in that space. It applies to everyone. If you start a business today, 
should we just break you up because you're, you're dominant? No. However, when you start breaking the competition laws, we step in. When uh, uh, some of the interventions in that space, uh, there was a time uh, in this market you could not transact uh, mobile money transactions from, if it's one player, you had to go to their shop. If it's another player, you have to walk a kilometer or so to get that, that service. These days, if you check, one mobile money player has all of them, including the ones for banks, their agents for banks. The intervention was by CAK, not by anyone else, because we found that one of the players had blocked the agents from doing business with other players. That is an illegality under the Competition Act. So we stepped in. Again, there are things called, uh, uh, what are they called? The, the USSD charges. Uh, we had found, we did an analysis, this star 521 or something, eh? there's a charge at the back end eh? that the, these players charge each other. So we had found that the rates that were there were, were prohibitive, as high as 10 shillings, I think, per transaction. And our intervention, uh, so those, we, we, we came up with a way that they were supposed to reduce, I think, to one shilling per, per transaction. So we have made interventions in that space, but the, those interventions can only be pegged to the illegality that of the action, not the mere fact that the person is big. Okay? Thank you. Yes. Re regarding banking and in a sector, uh, something I didn't mention, I, the merger regime, if we were to take the whole bound of it, would take a whole, it's a whole course, that would take, I think, a whole diploma. And one of the elements is that any merger globally any agency creates levels of what do you consider to be dominant. And if a merger from the onset is that it will, be, it will bring to a dominant position, it's actually not allowed. So globally, not only in Kenya, if a merger will bring dominance, Kenya we consider that when you have reached 40% of market share, you are tending towards dominance. 50% we consider you, you are dominant. So once we have defined the markets and we have established that the two parties or the three parties that are coming together, their market share will be above 50%. Actually, that's an outright decline of that merger. Mergers that lead to dominance, they can only have very high overriding impact to the public. That, for instance, we can say, we, we look at the current situation we have right now with COVID. So we see two players who are the biggest that are doing vaccines, assuming here in Kenya they're doing vaccines. And for them to be able to produce vaccines within two weeks, they need to come together. So that can be a very high overriding factor for us to allow that merger because there is, there is very much of public good to it rather than we just look at it in terms of dominance. But when you're looking at mergers, if at all you're reaching above 50% dominance, is that outright that merger will be rejected when we have actually catered out which are the markets that are being involved. Thanks. Good, thank you. I think uh, you wanted to kindly pass the mic the last response. I, th I think there is a question around uh, whether there is a post-merger audit of market definition. And then there was a question from a prof with regard to investigation, whether we have a, 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 a search engine that can mine the data. Those are the two questions. And the first one, I think, uh, post uh, major audit of market definition, we do revise our market definitions. And the practice out there is that uh, once you have made a decision on a case, uh, you have no chance of going back and redefining the market. But you can review your guidelines and see the implication of that market definition going forward. So that's what we do, and we do uh, redefine our market uh, definition guidelines and see whether they are st still uh, suitable for purpose. So we do that from time to time, given the dynamic nature of uh, issues that we deal with of the competition, we do revise our guidelines and see if they are still relevant given the nature of the market. Uh, with regard to investigation and search engine, uh, there are different levels of investigations. One is where we look at uh, investigation just to find out if actually the anticipated practice actually exists. There are instances where we don't find those exist. So what we do in such cases is we move out and uh, inform the players 
about competition requirements and if there's any violation. So we inform them and sensitize about competition and the requirement and the implication of violation of, of the law. And the second one is where we have uh, investigation which are of uh, serious magnitude, uh, which requires now uh, what we refer to as a don rate. There are provision in the act where we can go out and raid the farm uh, or manufacturers in the same sector. If there are five sectors, sector players, we do investigation for all of them and find out is there serious violation of competition act. In such cases, we do harvest their data and we look at the data from that perspective. And I think also the authority is in the process of acquiring uh, data mining uh, computers as we speak, because we are realizing that uh, big data is becoming extremely important. And as uh, Raphael initially said, there's no way we are going to avoid uh, big data in terms of even mergers or even research. So that's the trend we are going, and we are realizing that big data and analysis for our decisions is extremely important. Therefore, we are looking in that direction. But these computers are also uh, not cheap, so to speak. So, but we are moving in that direction. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for your responses. So I think we will end there. From the questions you've received, we are appreciative. And uh, to the panelists, thank you very much for your responses. They are very direct and they are very precise. So as I sit down, let's just uh, give a round of applause to each one of us who's come to participate and also ask questions. Eh? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chisang. Dr. Chisang is our HOD, school, uh, Department of Economics. At this moment, I want to invite, uh, and thank you to our panelists, Raphael Boniface, Dr. Wario, and even Mutegi, who stepped out to offer interventions. We appreciate that you will come and be part of us. I want to invite uh, Madam Doka Swamba, who is a faculty member in the School of Business and Economics, uh, to offer the way forward and then uh, propose a vote of thanks. Welcome, Dorcas. Good evening to all of us. Uh, I'm sure we have had an extremely insightful uh, session and discourse uh, from the communication, uh, from the uh, competition. Uh, where is it leaving my mind? Authority of Kenya, CAC. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, we we are now more empowered, uh, and so I am just here to give us a way forward and. Um, uh, a way forward, of course, is uh, I have been able to harvest and prune uh, quite a bit from our presenters and our panelists. Um, and so it is to say thank you very much. Uh, and before I go there, I want to say that uh, moving forward, uh, probably CAC can look uh, into a couple of things uh, that can continue to bring us more best practices um, and focus on a few issues now that we are getting into the digital economy. And um, probably one of the things that we need to really, really uh, farm up on is uh, uh, enhanced con uh, con consumer welfare. For example, I, had, I was thinking uh, what Kenya has through um, Kirk about subliminal or subliminal message messaging uh, that has totally been banned in the US. Eh? I don't know what we uh, go about it or how we go about it in Kenya. You know, where consumers are made to do things unconsciously uh, uh, without them really knowing uh, that they are doing it and engaging in certain practices. It's banned in the U.S. I don't know what, uh, what is the stand in Kenya about uh, such things. So how do we protect our consumers uh, based on that? And then probably we also need to think of uh, 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 promoting uh, competition while, com uh, while, while protecting consumers, and that has come out very well from our panelists. Probably we also need to address the digital era. It is here with us, and I think uh, we haven't thought very much uh, on that aspect. I think we need to really, really think about the digital era. I mean, uh, markets are going digital, consumers are going digital, and so I think um, 
we would want to really think about how to protect both uh, parties in this era. We also probably need to have uh, very serious uh, laws that enforce um, competitive markets, and I think that has come up, although I think we still need to go very deep. Capacity building, uh, personal data protection, I'm glad that came up, and we talked about uh, especially telecommunication companies, and we are saying that um, you are really, really getting into it to ensure that uh, consumers are protected. Uh, we need to regulate our businesses, and so forth. And so just two uh, cases in point here, Brazil, for example, is very, very serious on consumer protection. Uh, when you go to India, you'll find what we call as consumer courts, you know, courts, um, uh, where, you know, um, when consumers are, are, are not happy about uh, the, the products that are sold in the market or that are offered in the market, there are courts that they can advance to and they have themselves sorted out. Now, when we look at CAC, CAC... CAC is actually the watchman for the consumer, and we know that you're doing very well. But probably you might want to weigh forward, uh, want to diversify a little, and um, I thank you, uh, Dr. Tari, when you said that, um, and I think uh, uh, our manager says that uh, you're encouraging more lobby groups to, 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 to actually become very active. Probably we need to do that a little more so that we can sensitize our consumers, because we always talk about caveat emptor, you know, buyer beware. So what are we being aware about when we don't have the information? Yeah? So probably let's go into social media, let's get into whichever forums we can to make sure people understand that you have these rights. Because I think when we started this talk, the first question was, uh, do you know your rights as a consumer? And the question uh, was not very well answered. Why? Because many of us do not really know our rights. And how do our rights come? They will come by us getting the knowledge, you know. And how will the knowledge come? Through information. How will that information reach the consumer? I think we, will das we, we need to diversify and, you know, think of forums. Daystar has um, opened itself up for you today to come and really empower us and we are so grateful that you could come. So how does this information also get to reach other consumers out there? Okay, okay, so I may not say much, I think because so much has been uh, taken care of by the panelists uh, when you presented um, uh, your talk and also through the questions, but I am here to really say thank you on behalf of Daystar University that you created time to come and empower us, and I am sure I'm, a be I'm better off a thousand times, and many of our listeners and viewers are also uh, better off a thousand times, uh, because what you have said is probably what we didn't know, but now we know, and we need to get to get to know uh, better from that um, uh, from that discourse. All right. Um, I would also like to, um, having given us a way forward and probably a vote of thanks, uh, I'd like to probably invite uh, the dean, School of Business and Economics, Dr. Amata to present to our speakers just a token of appreciation. I would also like to invite um, uh, the principal uh, of Nairobi campus, Professor Bowen, to also just um, give something to you, um, to say thank you for having created time to be here and for sharing that very dynamic um, uh, information that you've given us. So we shall start with um, Dr. Roba. Kindly step forward. Are you able to clap and say thank you for his contribution? Thank you, Dr. Roba. I, I pray that we shall have another, another opportunity to have this happen, probably when we have more stakeholders in the house. Um, I'd also like to invite um, uh, Mr. Boniface Committee. Kindly step forward. Uh, and we are looking at you as our main watchman. So when we are conned in the supermarkets, we shall come to you. Mr. Committee. Thank you. 
Great. All right. I'd also finally want to invite uh, Mr. Raphael Mboro uh, on uh, mergers and acquisitions. Thank you. We really need much more information on the same. So I think uh, we shall be inviting you again to come and give us more info. Thank you, Mr. Moro. Thank you. Fantastic. So thank you, uh, Professor Bo Bowen and uh, Dr. Amata, our Dean, School of Business and Economics. And that brings us to the end of uh, today's uh, uh, very insightful discourse. Um, I'd like to invite um, our chaplain, if she's here. Okay, uh, Mr. Munya will step in for her, just to come and uh, have a closing prayer. Um, again, as we do that, panelists, we are really looking at you. Encourage us, even as Daystar, to, to come up with lobby groups or lobby education or consumer education, or consumer programs that can really empower all of us, because I think what Kenyans really need is information. Thank you. God bless you. Sorry, I forgot to say something. Um, Kirk has come with something for us also. Uh, they have uh, donated an annual report and competition act that can give us as much information as we uh, desire. And these uh, documents are now uh, in our library, uh, both campuses. So the information that uh, is not out there, I think, is contained in the documents. So kindly uh, visit the libraries, both at the River and Nairobi campus and you'll be able to come across the Annual Report and Competition Act. Thank you, Kirk. Thank you, thank you. Shall we rise so that we can say the closing prayer? Our Father, our Lord, and our God, Jehovah, we lift and we worship your holy name this hour. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given us even to learn about mergers and acquisitions, O Jehovah Lord. We thank you for each and every facilitator, dear Lord, who has stood before us, even to minister to us. We worship you and we bless you, and even as we close this, dear Lord, we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray and we trust. Amen. Thank you very much for coming.